Hey, how you doing? Daniel Ruiz Tyson uh, with another writer's life uh, back from a late morning writing session, back from uh, a brief uh, little run, uh, popped into Sainsbury's as well. I remember an old listener of uh, my old radio show, Daniel Ruiz Tyson, is available, uh, Paul S. Davis, uh, quite possibly the greatest accruer of nectar points that I have ever encountered, telling me that uh, writing into the show once, writing, the, the show wasn't happening in the 90s, um, emailing the show. And uh, Paul said that um, if you reduced your shopping at Sainsbury's, you would actually get more Nectar Point coupons. And because I used to do a lot of shopping at Sainsbury's, I never experienced that. Because I'm now doing the bulk of my shopping at Lidl, every time I go into Sainsbury's, I'm just absolutely overwhelmed at the self-checkout with uh, Nectar coupons. You know, the machine's just spitting them out. And uh, apart from an offer on antibacterial uh, wipes, None of them are of any use to me. None of them are for anything that I buy, which is quite frustrating. Um, use the self-checkout again. Always feel a bit guilty with that because, you know, those machines are doing uh, people out of their jobs. And those machines frustrate me in that they always give you their change. The, you know, the two Ps, the one Ps, it's... Um, I always now make a point of uh, going to the customer services desk and, uh, you know, just getting a 10p or a 20p piece just because I get so irked by these machines spitting out change. My bagging up ran into issues again at Sainsbury's. I like to double bag in advance. Um, what did I put in first? I think I put in a, a, a bag of porridge into the bag at the self-checkout. It wasn't being recognised. I had to call the uh, self-checkout uh, supervisor over. And a very serious guy said the issue was uh, I was double bagging. So the machine was picking up on some extra weight there that I shouldn't double bag until after I'd done my shopping. And I said to him, you know, that would make the actual double bag in harder because the bag is going to be quite bulbous by then. You know, I've packed in my goods into a single bag. It's going to be harder to double bag. I like to double bag in advance, um, but certainly given me something to think about. Anyway, uh, a quite a productive uh, hour and a bit in the cafe working on this uh, rewrite. Um, I think I'm experiencing all year some problems with my eyes. I've, had to wear glasses just for PC work since I was uh, just before I turned 20, actually. But um, I think I might have to start wearing them when I'm actually writing as well. You know, just just making notes with a pen. I, I you know, I've, I've noticed certainly a decline in the um, eyesight. One of the things I was always blessed with actually was, uh, you know, good eyesight. I think. Um, so I was in the cafe. Uh, productive hour and a bit working away and uh, this former waiter uh, arrived I think he now works as a courier he was there for maybe less than a year he was the most miserable waiter I've probably ever encountered there well no actually the second most miserable uh, waiter there was a guy in 2011 2012 with a really small face certainly the smallest faced waiter I've seen in my 19 years in the cafe um, he looked like Kojak's younger brother in the TV series that that guy so I think he was the most miserable he was obviously very unhappy in the cafe but this other guy uh, the miserable waiter the second most miserable waiter there and yet the thing is on the rare occasions that he smiled his face was absolutely transformed he had a lovely smile brilliant teeth and uh, Portuguese but uh, one time over a small talk exchange that kind of snowballed into something bigger he revealed that he'd been a trucker uh, in the uh, in the Basque region, I think. So he knew a lot about Spain, and uh, you know, I told him my background, and from then on, you know, things became cordial between us. And uh, he left about four years ago, I think. And to see him return now, I always feel a bit embarrassed about how maybe my character has developed in his absence in the cafe. I'm a bit more gregarious. I'm more. A, 
conscious of what the cafe has given me you know in a in a, in a life where my social circles have shrunk to almost nothing um the small talk in the cafe with the cafe regulars is alongside um you know my regular interaction with uh, my aunt the only face-to-face -face interaction i have most weeks and I think he's coming in and he's glancing over at my table, seeing I'm still there, my, my toilet table in the corner by the swing saloon doors, thinking, what's going on with this guy? Why is, he's talking to people, he's smiling, he's shaking hands. What's going on here? I think he probably feels, I don't know, betrayed might be too strong a word, but I think he feels that there was some kind of uh, mutual kinship. You know, uh, we were cut from the same cloth. And certainly I would look at him often when he was uh, working in the cafe thinking if I was a waiter here, I'd probably be like that. He was even off with the Portuguese regulars, which was strange. You know, most waiters might be off with the non-Portuguese regulars. This guy was off with, with just about everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm very self-conscious. He's seeing me shaking hands, smiling, small talking. And uh, I've seen him come in before and I think maybe I need to rein it in. Maybe I need to, maybe I just need to be mindful of that whenever he's in the cafe, you know? So, um, I don't know. I just, like I say, just feel like I've uh, betrayed the guy. Uh, the most affable waiter, of course, in my 19 years there was Southpaw, the uh, uh, waiter with the low left-handed tall glass delivery. He was magnificent. I think the miserable waiter came just after him. So I went from one extreme to the other. But yeah, I mean, even now he looks miserable, the, the miserable waiter. So it wasn't the job that was making him miserable. He's got a very distinctive head, like Long Cheney Senior in the Phantom of the Opera, the same skull, the same hairline. And I just think he's one of those guys, maybe he's very standoffish. Um, and that great smile of his isn't seen often enough. I saw it, I glimpsed it. I don't know. I've seen him a few times back now. And uh, should I be embarrassed about how I've grown as a person in the cafe in his absence? How much more sociable I am? I don't know. It's something for me to think about. Uh, please uh, subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, click and share the videos if you like them. And uh, I hope you're enjoying your day.